Welcome to the 19th webinar hosted by the English Language Teachers Association of India, LTI, on the topic Exploring Leadership in Education. I'm your host for today, Rahul Kale from LTI Pune chapter. It's my pleasure to have you all here with us today. Before we dive into today's engaging topic, let's take a moment to get acquainted with the vibrant world of LTI. For those of you who are new to our community, or simply need a refresher, we have a brief video to showcase some of our incredible activities and initiatives that we have been involved in. Kevin, could you please play the video? Wow, wasn't that inspiring? LTI's commitment to empowering English language educator across India is truly commendable. We hope you will consider becoming a part of this dynamic association if you haven't already. Well, before uh, I reveal the presenter's identity, let me take this, make this interactive. I'd like to see your engaging comments in the chat box. So, Please type, what are the qualities of a true leader? What do you think? What makes a true leader? Please flood the chat box with your comments. I'll read out a few responses to get the energy flowing. Vision, integrity, ability to influence, effective, inspiring, 
concern, commitment, dedication, amazing. Problem solving, empathy, patience, amazing. Thank you so much for writing down all those qualities there. That's great. Well, before I introduce uh, our moderator, a few more instructions. I request all of you to write your questions in the chat box so that we can raise those questions at the end of the session to the presenter. We will share the feedback link at the end of the session. Please ensure that you fill in your details by today evening. Itself. Please don't delay it. Otherwise, we will not be able to share the link again and you will not receive the certificate. Now, let me take the opportunity to introduce our esteemed moderator who will be moderating this webinar and offer her expert opinion at the end of the session. Our moderator for today is Professor C. Sharda. Madam works at the Department of English Literature at the English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. Her areas of specializations are post-colonial literature, American literature, British literature, and so on. She has published around 20 research papers in the national and international journals. She has edited a book titled American Literary Studies in Post-Millennial India, published by Lexington Books, USA. She entered into a contract with uh, Rawlidge uh, Publications for co-editing a book titled Global Literatures and Cultures of Modernity. She is also a resource person at HRDC, Osmania Union University, and Dr. Mary Chenna Reddy, HRDC. Ma'am, we are truly privileged to have you with us today. Now, without further ado, let me hand over the session to Dr. Sharda. Okay. Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome on board uh, to this wonderful and uh, exhilarating journey that we are all going to participate in. Uh, the webinar titled Exploring Leadership Qualities in Education. Our resource person for today is Dr. Maitri Shinde. Uh, she is a senior assistant professor in St. Mary's Degree College, uh, Yusuf Kuda. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Maitri Shinde. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, we are all really eagerly waiting uh, to listen to your uh, uh, very motivating uh, talk. And uh, after the talk, uh, we will all be sharing our own ideas across, and then maybe we would get some questions. And this is going to be a very interactive session, Dr. Maitri. So we are looking forward to a very beautiful journey now. Thank you so much. Uh, so sh shall I ask Dr. Maitri Shinde to start with her presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Eltai. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Rahul, for uh, hosting the show. And thank you, Sharda, ma'am, for that introduction. So let me begin with my presentation for the day. I hope uh, everyone is able to see the screen. Hello, can you see the screen? No. No, ma'am. Not yet. Now, no, just a minute.
now i'm sure you can see the screen no ma'am we still can't your uh, we still can't see your screen i'm just uh, click the present now and give yeah, uh, I, did. I, did I did that resume presenting i pressed just try once again ma'am just give share yeah Present. i clicked share and i clicked resume presenting because i opened my screen all, already ma'am ne uh, just close and open it again ma'am okay that might be a problem Yeah, can you see now, Kevin? No, ma'am, it is not. Shall I I'm share just... it with you otherwise? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just share it with me. I do that. Okay. Yeah, I do that. Okay, did we fix this problem? Once again, I request all of you to interact in the chat box. What are the qualities that are missing in today's leaders? I know uh, you won't like to disclose this, but then still, I want you to scratch your heads. And what do you think? What are the qualities which are missing in today's leaders? Or let us restrict ourselves to the educational leaders. Which are the qualities that are missing? <laughs> okay. Empathy, loyalty, honesty, okay. Motivation, emotional intelligence, okay. Participative style, responsibility, oh. You're raising so many concerns here. Accountability, moral values, okay, team building skills, self-reflection, Dedication, attentive listening, love and understanding, amazing, enthusiasm, okay, how to bind others together, amazing, great, solving problems, not in the right way, okay. Education, self management. Responsibility. Okay. A wonderful comment here by Shreema Nandi. Leaders acting like a boss. <laughs> so is there any difference between a boss and a leader? Yeah, please let me know if you have any opinion here. Please write it in the chat box. What's the difference between a leader and a boss? I will sir, we can resume. Uh, I got the yes. activity, we can resume. Okay, I think uh, we have fixed the problem. The session, uh, we'll resume the presentation. Okay.
تمام Mang, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, there was some technical glitch at my end. I'm really sorry about it. Good evening, everyone. I'm really glad to share this um, talk of mine for today's webinar, exploring leadership in education. Now, all of us are aware that educational landscape, especially in the uh, context of higher education institutions, has uh, undergone a sea change. Now, this change is inevitable, and this change is, uh, I mean, uh, this change has been so very glaring and apparent over the years. So, educational landscape, it's been ever evolving. Now, when we talk about exploring uh, leadership in education. I remember a very interesting quote uh, said by one of the CEOs. He says that, you know, before one becomes a leader, success is all about growing oneself. But once one becomes a leader, success is all about growing others. I would like to relook at this statement and say that. Uh, whether or not one has a positional authority, success is all about growing together. On this note, I would like to talk about today's objectives of the session. Now, I would be emphasizing on five main objectives during uh, the course of this uh, discussion. Uh, the first one being visit and revisiting educational leadership. The second one, the need for educational leadership. The third one, to understand the roles of responsibilities of educational leaders, especially in the context of higher education institutions. Fourth, we'll be looking at different styles of educational leadership. And finally, we we'll look at what reflective learning is all about. Can we move on to the next slide? OK, now when I said revisit or visiting uh, leadership in education. Now, I have collected some of the definitions that are broadly uh, uh, you know, popular. And the one which I like, uh, uh, I mean, the one that uh, really makes it very interesting is leaders are, or educational leaders are the ones who have a picture of a preferred future. I mean, it is shared, uh, I mean, it's a vision that is shared by all the stakeholders or all the members of the institution. And then all policies, procedures, and priorities are, you know, designed in a way that paves a way towards the 21st century educational landscape. So hence leadership, educational leadership is all about influencing people. Thank you, Rahul, just before starting the session, you. Um, asked people to, you know, list out some of the skills that talk about educational leadership or in the general context of who a leader is. I mean, the work has become much easier when I talk about educational leadership. We talk about leadership everywhere. I mean, we say that, you know, uh, uh, leaders are everywhere. Now, what is this concept of educational leadership? Now, we uh, would you uh, move the slide, uh, Kevin? Yeah. Now, now we have something called the new education policy 2020. What is the new education policy 2020 talking about? It's talking about a comprehensive, adaptable education system that paves a roadmap towards meeting the 21st century challenges. Now, in this context, I would talk about, you know, something a little about a difference between leadership and management in the context that, you know, all managers cannot be good leaders. But sometimes, I mean, leaders can always be good managers as well. Now, there's this saying by Bush, who has uh, done a lot of work on educational leadership, who says that leadership links to values, goals, and purposes of education, while management in education relates to implementation of ideas. So leaders talk about what is to be done, and managers talk about how 
a certain task has to be executed. So that is a, a, a you know a, a difference. That's the major difference that's there between leaders and managers. I like this wonderful saying that uh, the, the, you know that someone said that you know uh, managers light fire under the people, whereas leaders um, light uh, fire in the people. So that's a little difference between who leaders are and who managers can be. Can we move on to the next slide? Having said this, I said today's session would be focusing more on higher educational institutions. Now, leadership in education begins from kindergarten, begins from you know the primary, and moves through uh, you know higher education and uh, all of. That. Now, when we talk about my second objective, as I told you. Uh, is to understand the need of educational leadership. Now, what do we mean by, you know, uh, 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 why do we have to have this kind of educational leadership? Now, we say that, you know, we have the principal of a college, we have, you know, the VC of a university, we have management people and all of those people. Now, do we actually have to have something called as, or what is great about, you know, talking about educational leadership? Now, having talked about a little about the new education policy that talks about a comprehensive and adaptable education, and you know it is talking about the education making a sea change, a sea difference in the society. Hence, we are here to make a difference. And point number two, we are talking about leading with a purpose. What do we mean by leading with a purpose? It's more or much beyond teaching and learning. Now. Having said that, now when we say sustainable development, it is the United Nations uh, uh, sustainable goals that we have of the 17 goals. Now, some of us are at least aware of the 17 goals that uh, the United Nations sustainable goals uh, uh, charter has. It has 17 goals. Of the 17 goals, the fourth goal talks about inclusive to ensure inclusive and uh, uh, to, in, uh, to ha ensure inclusive and comprehensive education for all sections of society and have and uh, make education accessible for everyone so when we have that now now here we have the regulatory bodies coming into the picture now who are these regulatory bodies or what are these regulatory bodies we are aware of you know all of us have gone through uh, uh, these internal assessments the external assessments and these regulatory bodies like nag we have the nirf the national institution um, uh, framing network and then we have uh, uh, the other bodies the aict and so on and so forth that talk about meeting the standards of you know, the uh, meeting certain standards which talk about quality education, imparting quality education. So when we look at these 21st century educational challenges, it is also about creating a roadmap. It is also about sustenance initiatives, having certain sustenance initiatives which calls for certain internal and external assess, uh, assessment. So in that context, that is how these regulatory bodies rate organizations or, you know, rank institutions or, you know, they rank uh, higher eds or universities saying that, you know, so-and-so institution, so-and-so college or so-and-so university has a, a grade or a B grade, so on and so forth. That's where positioning the organization comes. Where do we position our organization? Now, when we have these internal and external assessment factors going in, so how do we position our organization? Now, this positioning is highly important when we say that, you know, society has to understand or students get to understand, understand or people, faculty who want to join an institution get to understand where an organization stands or where a particular uh, you know, institution stands. Hence, positioning of an organization becomes highly imperative. Now, what is to build academic and administrative autonomy? 
Now, when we say, now all of us, I think, are aware that, you know, by the year 2030, all educational institutions are either supposed to be gain autonomy or either be a university, which means that, you know, once we gain autonomy, the reason for gaining autonomy is to, to promote quality education or to instill quality. Okay, so when we talk about this administrative and academic autonomy, it's about, you know, having or introducing state of art um, uh, courses, state of art uh, programs so that, you know, we make our students industry ready or job ready. Okay, now next in the picture comes building collaborations. Now we know what, uh, you know, building collaborations is. Uh, NEP has been talking about globalization of education. What do we mean by globalization of education? We seem to, you know, we are aware that, you know, we, uh, we have something called as student exchange programs, faculty exchange programs and all of that. Now collaboration begins within an institution faculty faculty collaboration could happen you know interdepartmental collaboration can happen institutional collaborations can happen institution across other states collaborations can happen so this would build education i mean it would make education global or what we mean to say that you know we could make our children you know experience the global uh, education system now, having said this, let me move on to the next slide. Can we have the next slide, uh, Kevin? Now, let's understand the roles and responsibilities of educational leadership. Now, I would be giving an overview of what the, uh, you know, organizational leadership uh, is all about, especially in the context of an educational setup. Now we have administrative, we have work environment, we have enrollment and staffing and so on and so forth. So when we talk about all of this, it talks about inclusive classrooms. I'm sure that, you know, we understand that, you know, the in the uh, near agenda, the coming agenda, we are, uh, the, the, the government is, the Indian government is planning to, you know, eradicate illiteracy to a great extent. We have, they have still, they have understood that, you know, there are still five crore people below, uh, I mean, who are still not literate. So they are actually looking for, or the aim is to have a ratio of 25 is to one student pay, um, uh, or uh, student faculty ratio 25 is to one that's there in the agenda now inclusive classrooms we know what inclusive classrooms providing education across all sections of the society now when we know about enrollment and staffing we have performance ev evaluation professional development and support staff well uh, wellness and mental health we have our apis we have our appraisal system all of that to ensure that you know we meet certain standards so that you know we are growing in the process towards making the organization reach a certain larger picture or the larger vision so we are more somebody has written in the chat box that we can be influencers yes teachers are influencers it's not just people or insta or who make reels are influencers teachers are definitely influencers so can we have the next slide the next slide talks about collaborations i just talked about you know globalization of education and all of that now the revising standards and uh, curriculum under which we have something called as overcoming curricular limitations sometimes we are bogged down by the syllabus sometimes we feel that you know this syllabus is so very irrelevant so very you know out of date or so very obsolete so once we gain um, academic and uh, administrative autonomy i'm sure we would be able to introduce new courses wherein the conventional courses would be taking a back seat and the new courses which would become you know uh, probably the buzzwords of the education landscape now leveraging technology all of us i think we have had learning management systems uh, uh, prior to covid 
we we never uh, you know thought about the importance of uh, making videos using technology i mean our knowledge of using technology was minimal but now with you know the covid uh, situation hitting us hard i mean we have got uh, uh, you know hands on experience on making videos on making you know lessons on uh, the uh, moodle and all of that now this is something where uh, the new education policy talks about you know um, intervention of technology that becomes even more important now technology i am sure uh, the you know uh, uh, during the uh, especially when we were uh, when the when the government took certain initiatives especially i can say that you know in the state of telangana government has taken great initiatives in terms of uh, giving access of internet to uh, school students in remote areas there were tsat programs introduced for children where you know uh, video lessons and video programs were uh, taken on uh, or, or screened on tvs and children would sit in a certain place and then view those so learning took a different uh, you know, different uh, uh, shape altogether. I mean, teaching and learning took a different shape altogether. And hence, today we are talking about blended learning techniques. We are talking about flipped classroom. And hence, now teaching and learning becomes even more accessible and even more uh, interesting. Can we have move to the next slide, uh, Kevin? Now, positioning self promoting instructional leadership creating a legacy of effective uh, leadership of course we are having reform strategies or trying to build reform strategies based on the challenges that we face each time and then the instructional leadership we just talked about you know the moving uh, the changes in the instructional uh, mode we are uh, how do we uh, um, uh, i mean how do we ensure that there is instructional leadership there are certain teachers who have been doing exceptionally wonderful especially in terms of blended teaching techniques or in terms of virtual teaching and all of that so in this context we say that you know instructional leadership has reached leaps and bounds and then um, next we have leading in times of crisis and disruption of course, I think during the COVID-19 is the best example to talk about how the educational system has undergone a total transformation. I mean, we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't have that laid back attitude or we didn't have that kind of, uh, you know, uh, let it be the way it's going and all of that. We learned new skills. We adapted, you know, to the circumstances. We made videos. We made uh, lessons that were, you know, even more student friendly. We tried to make certain assignments that could go, you know, on the virtual mode and all of that. So any education system or any institution should be in a way to be it uh, should have the preparedness to uh, you know to, uh, uh, to confront uh, these um, unwarranted challenges like uh, pandemics or the natural disasters and all of that okay the next slide can we have uh, kevin could you play the video i just have a short video yes ma'am yeah before we get into the leadership styles i thought we could play a small video that would be more interesting Thank <laughs> you. 
you, Kevin, for the video. Um, uh, would people uh, respond to the video and talk about the different skills that you can see through the video? Could you mention the different skills? Could you post it in the chat box? OK, it's teamwork. OK, teamwork. An ordinary person becomes a leader by uniting a group of people, collaboration, teamwork. Yes, communication, very good. Very interesting, collaboration. Interpersonal skills, yes. Problem solving, cooperation, empathy, wow. Coordination, effective communication, dedication. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Critical thinking, wow. Lead, lending a helping hand, yes. Thank you. Thank you all. So leadership, I mean, need not be, uh, I mean, it. I'm sorry, I think I turned my camera off. Yeah. Leadership can be manifested in any person. I mean, you don't have to have a positional authority, especially when we talk about uh, educational context. Now, we, we also talk about top-down leadership, bottom-top e leadership and all that. And sometimes we also know about lateral leadership. Now, what leadership is, leadership style is, you know, relevant or most effective or um, uh, is leadership, I mean, uh, do does one have to practice only one style of uh, leadership? Let's look at First, the different styles of leadership. OK, now we I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've been through quite a, uh, quite a few number of, uh, you know, uh, books and uh, uh, sites talking about different leadership styles in general and leadership styles, especially in the educational context. I felt that, you know, these five could be more relevant and they could be more contextual. Now, when we say authoritative or autocratic, I'm sure all of us understand that the autocratic leadership style is more about command and control. So the leader tells, you know, the, the people to do certain tasks and then the people have to do it. Now, dem democratic leadership or some, sometimes called as distributive leadership. What do we mean by democratic or distributive leadership? It's leadership displayed by different people at different levels. So it is not just one person who's there in the decision making process. It's, you know, a group of people. It could be, you know, a, a department head. It could be a community uh, a committee a coordinator or a facilitator, so on and so forth. So a group of people come together and make decisions. Now, next, I would like to talk about transactional leadership. This is, you know, it's a method of, it's a leadership of method of um, uh, rewarding and punishment. You do well, you're rewarded. You're not doing well, you're punished. So that's the kind of a transactional leadership that um, that uh, that's talked about. Now, laser fair leadership. This is another interesting kind of uh, uh, leadership that we can talk about. It's actually a French word. This has come from a French word that talks, that says, let it be. I mean, the very definition says that let it be. I mean, leaders give complete autonomy to, you know, the people or the team members without having much, uh, much uh, in the decision making process. I mean, they give complete autonomy to the people in the team and they do not involve in any of the decision making process. Now, this leadership style would be effective only and only when there are a set of experts who are in the team. If there are no experts, then certainly the organization is sure to go on a toss. So that's one kind of leadership. Now this, the middle one that we have, that's called the transformational leadership. And that is, uh, you know, gaining much uh, popularity of late. Now, what do we mean by transformational leadership? Can we have the next slide, Kevin? Transformational leadership in the education sector, it talks about someone who navigates change, someone who accelerates growth, someone who ex uh, leverages culture. So all of these is, you know, is manifest in 
a person who is looking at transform transform the transformation transforming existing status quo to something big to the larger picture so that kind of a leadership is more we can also say that is this is a kind of a charismatic leadership that's another word for the transformational leadership as well okay now uh, can we go to the next slide uh, yeah i have given here three different issues or you could say three different contexts now could you read those and uh, we, uh, and uh, tell me which one which leadership style would be more relevant in any of these cases mr pramod working in an organization has borrowed money from his peers without the knowledge of the other members when pramod does not bother to return the money everyone in the office gets to understand that most of them have fallen victims to his sob stories and were cheated the matter is brought to the notice of the immediate manager situation 2 a college student has been engaged in community service for a long time even prior to joining this institution through the media the college gets to understand the student's engagement with social activities how does the institution respond to this and the third situation a very bright student has been inactive these days in classes her bad performance was reflected even in the exams when questioned by the teacher the student behaves rude and adamant the teacher is surprised with the changed attitude and behavior of the student can the teacher address this okay now there are three different situations now could you respond to these issues now the first issue how would the immediate manager respond to a situation like this college student reward wonderful the leadership style could be transformative wonderful yes can i have more responses from people for the first one for the first one you see these are people at three different levels yes bright student democratic okay democratic in the context that you know the management feels proud that we have someone like this and then it calls you know other members of uh, the, the it, it, they could call the teacher or the immediate uh, you know mentor of the class and then say that you know why don't we reward the student and then there could be a collaborative talk between the management the, the head and the you know the teacher and then you could they could reward the person this is also a transactional you know kind of a leadership style one with pramod what is the one with pramod the one with pramod could be autocratic style required people could say that you know immediate action has to be taken in the first case and then it he he or she there should be you know uh, uh, faculty grievance redressal and then Uh, or a non teaching staff redressal issue and then uh, they could he could be terminated or there can be stringent action against the person the third case root student transformational root student definitely the third case you could actually the teacher could be a facilitator the teacher could be a mentor and in the context that you know you can also if the college or the institution has a uh, you know a, a, a psychology teacher the teacher can take you know some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know a session for the child or the student could have an interaction with that uh, the psychologist and then see how this can be yes there could be a counseling session by the teacher the by the immediate uh, class teacher and then the issue can be addressed so what leadership style do you say, say that you know the last one would be appropriate transformative of course right okay thank you very much for your responses now let's move on to the next slide okay now here i have a slide that talks about different teachers being engaged in different ro roles as teachers 
we are into teaching we are into learning we are into mentoring we are into administration research we are into extension activity and we are into other activities i have just given you know the time frame that could be spread across a week a week days time uh, uh, time that could be sp spread across for different teachers at different levels i have talked about an assistant professor who is also a class teacher i am talking about an as associate professor who is uh, head of the department i am talking about a sports faculty i am also talking about a psychologist so let me tell you that you know uh, i'm sorry i'm not able to use my okay i can use a cursor here now a teacher a normal uh, i mean a teacher who's a class teacher who's taking 14 to 16 hours session per week and who's engaged in 4 to 6 hours of learning has little or no time for research or extension activity if you see here okay an associate professor and a head of the department having 10 to 12 hours of teaching 4 to 5 hours of learning five to six hours of administration and four to five hours of research and some two to three hours of extension okay and then we have the sports faculty who's who's training students for 10 to 12 hours per week and has considerable i mean extension this this i'm talking in context of you know sometimes the sports people have you know tournaments outside in university intercollegiate and all of that so Sometimes it so happens that, you know, in a month they are away for two or three days continuously or another month they are not going anywhere and all of that. So this is an average calculation that I am doing. So this is subject to every organization work structure and work plan. And hence, finally, I have the psychologist who would be teaching perhaps for eight to ten hours and then who would be mentoring per week for almost five to six hours and has little time for research and extension activity. The reason why I have put this, you know, this is, I, I, I put this, uh, uh, it's a very contextual situation, especially in higher education institution, because now when we talk about a teacher being into research, a teacher being into, uh, you know, extension activity, a teacher being a good mentor and all of that, I'm trying to tell, or I'm trying to say, how we could leverage our existing strength or our existing what do we say uh, 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 the, the role that we are playing and how that how we could uh, project it towards something that could be more constructive now this teacher or this person who is uh, spending four, 14 to 16 hours of teaching could could have a collaborative work with a student and contribute more towards research. Someone who's spending 14 to 16 hours of teaching and considerably more number of hours learning could also get into instructional leadership in terms of preparing content, in terms of preparing or designing syllabus and all of that. This is what I'm trying to tell. So leadership can be shown by this teacher as well. Now, when we talk about someone who is an assistant prof associate professor and also head, head of the department and has considerable experience with you know, administration, the orange areas are prospective areas. I'm just saying that you know, five to six hours of administrative experience, now this person can have more number of hours into extension activity okay in terms of organizing workshops in terms of organizing seminars in terms of organizing fdps and all of that so leadership could be displayed by this person in terms of doing outreach programs and all of that now sports faculty this person also could lead leverage the leadership in terms of promoting more number of tournaments or you know uh, in fact, facilitating more number of students toward greater goals in sports. And then finally, when we look at the psych uh, psychologist who's spending eight to 10 hours of teaching, 
could actually leverage this mentoring into extension activity as well, who's spending just around zero to one hour for extension. This could be leveraged and this part could be encouraged. So in all these cases, there could be an extended leadership that can enhance a teacher's role. All of us are juggling with too many things. We see that sometimes we say that, you know, there are too many on my plate. I cannot handle all of this. Now, when we try to focus, what is our strength? Let's do a SWOT on ourselves. What is our strength? What is the area that I can be good at? And hence, based on that, I could, you know, leverage my particular strength. So let's move on to the next slide. The role of a teacher, the English teacher. Now we have all English teachers present here. Now let me tell you, are we just teaching the textbook or are we just, you know, limiting ourselves to the text that we have in front of us? Of course, we are doing more than that. So English language is a window to the world and good literature enables the readers to form set of values and attitudes. It's also dealing with the human condition in terms of contributing towards the emotional development and fostering positive interpersonal attitudes. I would just like to quote one of the examples that I recently had. I was teaching a poem. I, uh, the poem, The Earth is... Uh, I, 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 I was just uh, teaching a poem titled Piano and Drums by Gabriel Okara. Now, I was when we were going through the poem, is it just talking about the text that is there? I mean, is it just the explicit meaning that we are talking about? We are opening more doors to the student in terms of dealing with the political conditions of the, you know, the African country. We are talking about the social cultural framework, so on and so forth. So it's not just the content that we are focusing on. We are focusing more or we are trying to explore, you know, the unexplored glories of our journey yeah can we move on so english teachers can be great influencers now this is another slide that talks about evaluating oneself i have two slides one for a teacher in the classroom and another for leaders okay um, now let's see this you could you could read all of these and say and have a kind of a self-evaluation for yourself and then say, I mean, which are the areas that I'm strong in and which are the areas I am not so strong? So the areas I am strong in, can I take it to the next level? Can I gain leadership in that particular aspect? So that's what that is the reason I put this slide. I understand my job very well. I believe in being impactful in the classroom. I make teaching relevant, quoting real life experiences or context or research. I encourage students to learn beyond the prescribed syllabus. I facilitate experiential learning strategies. I mentor students on career prospects. Okay. So these are the different things. Now you could respond to this and just say, what are the areas that you are strong in and what are the areas that would need some kind of improvement? Now, the areas that one is strong in, we could actually leverage that and take it to the next level. Can we move on to the next slide, Kevin? Yeah. Now, these are for leaders. I understand my job to lead people. I believe in, I mean, those who are in positional authority. I believe in working for the vision of the institution. I believe in taking the team along and collaborating. I encourage the team to perform beyond their comfort zones and guide them. I believe in creating a climate of trust and accountability. I take initiatives I, and keep myself abreast of the social environment. I involve others in the decision making. I believe in continuous and strategic development. So this is a slide for a kind of self-evaluation for people in leadership positions. Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. Now I would talk about reflective learning a little. John Dewey, who is actually uh, called the father of reflective learning, he is told that reflective learning is the beginning of critical transformation of thinking that results in reflective practice. 
which is putting into action what has been learned from past experiences and how this can be positive for personal and collective growth by sharing these experiences with different people now he has talked about a five structured model i didn't want to bring that here because it would be a little too much but i would like to talk about these two things reflection in action and reflection on action what is reflection in action something that we are doing and something that would be uh, we would be uh, doing in future question the purpose whether what is uh, what we are engaged in is adding any kind of value to myself or others or the organization do i find meaning in doing what i'm doing try to gauge the outcomes of your actions or what would be the outcome of this particular action and then review your tools do i have the right kind of tools to actually do the job next reflection on action something that you have already done the action is over okay so you would try to reflect on on the following points you would critically analyze what you have done you would try to leverage your learning you would try to reinforce the strengths and then you would overcome your shortcomings in a way it is kind of you know a swot for all of us now uh, the other day i was uh, just looking at this youtube uh, uh, video of our pm uh, narendra modi ji he was talking there was a session on pariksha pe charcha okay there was an elaborate talk given by him and he was quoting in one of his examples that you know teachers can be great influencers okay so in that context he says how many of your students have called you back 10 years after you have taught them or 20 years after you have taught them or sometimes you know people invite you for their weddings okay this is a classic example i felt that you know if a student is calling you for his or her wedding then i think we really made an impact i think we uh, i mean we have really influenced that person because a person thinks about you after 10 years or 20 years down the line so i think we have come to the end of my session i hope i could add some value so effective educational leadership is creating an atmosphere of possibilities so leadership is not just having a positional authority and manifesting leadership leadership comes at all levels at every level one can be a leader especially in the educational context when we are talking of building a road map towards the 21st century challenges i think all of us should be equipped with the change and adapt to the new challenges so thank you if there are any queries i'm open to them thank you thank you dr maitri shinde uh, for giving a very clear and comprehensive comprehensive view on uh, educational ecology and landscape basing it on five sturdy objectives the presentation is scientific informative insightful and of course thought provoking you have delineated your presentation by focusing on global education system roles and responsibilities of educational leadership by influencing generations of students an important point that you referred to is the post covid scenario where we had to really assimilate and adapt to the technology aided teaching which we were absolutely and new to the concept which we were very new to uh, this is a very pertinent observation and also leading in terms of critical times and uh, preparedness to confront the unforeseen situations that was a very pertinent observation uh, and the video especially on the different styles of leadership in education is interesting and very relevant to the topic 
uh, and then your presentation has uh, focused on uh, how uh, as teachers can we demonstrate leadership qualities within and outside the classroom you have steered your uh, exploration from the trajectory of macro level that includes the institutions boards commissions and policies to the micro level where we as individual teachers can bring in some transformation within our within our purview uh, and then the kind of extensive roles that we take up as english teachers spontaneously and effortlessly and seamlessly in the classroom by throwing open the vistas and and by extending the boundaries of critical thinking and creative thinking and imagination among our students so that was very very uh, very meaningful and very insightful presentation dr maitri as i could read through the comments the participants have all been commenting that it is an outstanding session and uh, it really i am very thankful for this uh, uh, great evening that we could all spend with you and now uh, i think we will open this uh, presentation uh, for interaction and i think there are a few questions that i have written down uh, for maitri shinde there is uh, one question yeah. from uh, dr aravindan uh, what are the challenges okay. involved in this process how to overcome within the time frame and results fixed by the institution uh, can we take all the questions at one go dr maitri or can we go one after the other I think it will be relevant if I can go one after the other. Is sure, that sure. would that be fine? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be so, fine. Yeah. So, what are the challenges? You talked the... about challenges. Time. Yeah, I got the question. You uh, the somebody has right. somebody has asked me. Uh, I think uh, the challenges that we foresee as a teacher. yes there are challenges there are obstacles you know everybody's mindset is not identical i mean we say that you know even our five fingers are not similar right so when we are dealing with multiple people we are dealing with uh, you know different people coming from varied backgrounds and all of that so these interpersonal challenges group dynamics is a very very apparent factor which could be you know a major challenge for us to you know motivate everyone towards an organizational goal so that is one challenge challenge to you know we have these um, unforeseen challenges that are always there uh, i mean people especially when we say that you know we are supposed to be uh, uh, going uh, 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 blended teaching and all of that so not every teacher is equipped with um, uh, technology not every uh, student has access to especially when we consider the remote areas or e areas where you know the basic infrastructure is not there so what do we say about nep and all of that to such students or such children i mean i mean there is a lot that uh, we have to be still Uh, working on and hence only then you know when collective effort happens from the government from the you know central government and at the institutional level i think only then there would be or there could be possible uh, you know uh, challenges that we should be able to overcome i think i just spoke about two or three challenges but there are many there are certainly many challenges that we foresee okay uh, the next question is from uh, sam uh, he is asking the difference between reflective teaching and reflexive uh, learning reflexive learning and uh, reflective learning reflective learning as i just said you reflect on your experiences you reflect on what you have done in the past and then in the present how do you try to uh, you know overcome the mistakes or overcome your weaknesses and then strengthen your uh, positive points and all of that and then 
uh, um, uh, charter a roadmap towards your development or towards you know the larger goal that is about reflective learning reflexive i'm really not very sure about what reflexive learning is i and i don't want to attempt answering that thank you so much and there is one uh, hand uh, elt tutorials has raised his hand uh, can someone ask question elt tutorials uh, so he has you raised his hand questions in the chat box around uh, okay mm. so there are only two questions which i have already uh, we have already asked and discussed and uh, the other question maybe they are all very thankful and then as i opened i can find that they are asking for the feedback form otherwise i think can we uh, have a, okay, we sorry to that. interrupt ma'am uh, if there are no questions further can we have a small video play that's just for a minute the last video yes ma'am kevin sure. could you play that yes just a minute for a minute yes. uh, just a minute ma'am yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maitri. Uh, if there are no more questions, I think uh, uh, I will pass this on to Dr. Rahul, the host of this session, to have his uh, remarks over this. Well, as John Maxwell says, the leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Thank you, Dr. Maitri Shinde, for your interactive session on exploring leadership in education. It was not just informative session, but also incredibly eng engaging and thought-provoking. The ideas that you shared with us were really very interesting. The videos were also very interesting. On behalf of Altai and all our participants, thank you so much, Dr. Shinde, for conducting such an interesting and inspiring session. I also would like to thank Professor Sharda for moderating the session and offering her expert remarks. I also would like to thank you, ma'am, for summarizing the session and handling question and answer session. Well, friends, behind the scenes, there is a dedicated team that works tirelessly to ensure that the webinars are successful. A special thanks to Kavin for his hard work and commitment in promoting the excellent excellence in English language teaching. Thank you, Kavin. And last but not least, a heartfelt thank you to all our participants from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Nepal, Saleh, Philippines, Malaysia, and of course, all your interactive participation, questions, and insights 
they really make our webinars not just informative, but also a wonderful platform and rich discussions and global collaboration. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us from various parts of the world. Well, friends, please don't forget to fill up the feedback form. As announced before, certificates will be issued only to school students, undergraduate and postgraduate students, LTI members, and foreign nationals. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before I wrap up, a few more announcements. Please mark your calendars and save the date for our next LTI webinar. That is on Sunday, March 24th. We have a captivating session planned for you on the topic popular cultures and new readership. Dr. Girish Pawar is going uh, uh, from Hyderabad University is going to deliver this talk. Uh, Kevin, can we please have the poster with us on the screen? Yes, yes sir. It's there. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the registration details and additional information about this exciting webinar are available in the chat box on the screen, and it will also be available on our website. You will also receive a notification on your emails very soon. Well, friends, please remember your active participation is not only encouraged, but it is very essential for encouraging our teams to do well. So please ensure that you keep attending the LTI webinars and keep encouraging us. Now it's time for a group photograph. I request everyone to switch their cameras on. Let's have a quick group photograph here. Before you do that, let me thank you. Let me thank uh, uh, Kevin. Let me thank Sharda ma'am for uh, coordinating the entire thing. It was really interesting coordinating uh, with all of you, and hence uh, I would uh, my I would uh, express my special gratitude to Eltai for giving me this opportunity to talk on this uh, interesting talk. I don't know if I have added any value to the session, but uh, thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. I request you, ma all the members to turn their videos on. Let's try to have a group photograph here. Yeah, can we say cheese? <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Well, with this, thank you, Dr. Hi, Kale, take your leave. Thank you so much for thank attending you. the session. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. thank you for voting it so beautifully. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye.